Registered Phenomena Code 909 Object Class Gamma Yellow Hazard Types Aggression Psychotronic Sapient Extradimensional Teleportation Extraterrestrial Immeasurable Containment Protocols RPC-909 is to be kept in a 10m by 10m by 10m reinforced ballistic glass containment unit at site. Subject is to be monitored at all times by a 24-hour router of no less than 4 personnel of minimum level 2 clearance. All cameras are to be inspected daily and maintained accordingly. In the case of a containment breach, or if RPC-909 becomes agitated, Class C sedative gas is to be released via the containment unit's ventilation system. Any human child found in RPC-909's containment chamber is to be recovered immediately, if possible. Missing persons location protocols are then to be initiated. Level 3 research and medical staff are permitted to enter RPC-909's containment unit while RPC-909 is unconscious to perform routine physical checks. Any documents pertaining to medical operations to be performed on RPC-909 should be cleared by Dr. before procedures are carried out. Upon Dr. request, the containment cell has been issued a surplus of preschool educational toys in hopes of garnering attempts of interaction and or basic learning from RPC-909 given its childlike disposition, as well as to occupy RPC-909 in hopes of reducing the risk of an abduction incident. RPC-909 is a large, vaguely octopoid lifeform, measuring 4.2 meters in height and 6,000 kg in body mass. Its origin is unknown, but is theorized to be extraterrestrial as RPC-909's biochemistry appears to be methane-based. Tissue samples of RPC-909 contains a chemical structure similar to heptane, a compound used to make rubber cement. RPC-909 is capable of levitation and hovers two meters above ground and is able to move through the air at observed maximum speeds of 8.9 meters per second. The anatomy of RPC-909 consists of a large head, measuring roughly 2 meters in diameter, with visible red optic glands behind the eye sockets. On each side of RPC-909's torso are three elastic tubular tentacles, each ending in a five-digit humanoid hand. The front of RPC-909's rib thorax opens up to an exposed chest cavity that appears to absorb excess light of any source, appearing as a void within RPC-909's chest. Only a faint red glow within the center of the chest cavity has been observed. The mouth of RPC-909 appears to resemble a beak, with mandible-like appendages that protrude from the lower jaw, and two distinctly human eyes of a crimson coloration. Two symmetrical translucent tubes protrude from the sides of RPC-909's lower spine and connect to the front of the subject's lower abdominal region. The purpose of these tubes is unknown, but appear to be biological in nature, and thus must serve some biological function. One hypothesis from Dr. is that the tubes, being of a slight reddish saturation, could be part of the circulatory system or filtration system that provides RPC-909 a means of sustenance, be it nutritional or respiratory. The bottom of RPC-909's torso has five appendages, similar to crab legs, in a quadratic arrangement below the abdomen, with the fifth longest leg within the center portion. However, these legs appear to serve no ulterior purpose, as RPC-909 does not appear to utilize them, though they often gyrate during levitation. It has been theorized that its levitation capabilities are somehow attributed to its legs. The biological research of RPC-909 is still ongoing. Psychologically, RPC-909 appears to act similarly to a human child around the age of three years. 
While RPC-909, unable to communicate verbally, RPC-909 is capable of understanding basic gestures and words without response, showing signs of intelligence but little engagement in communication. RPC-909 is also prone to violent temper tantrums, in which it will vocalize loudly and lash out with its arms either against the walls of its containment unit or towards nearby personnel. Researchers noted its vocalizations as similar to a human infant. These bouts of rage are usually triggered seemingly at random, or after RPC-909 shows obvious signs of becoming irritable. One anomalous property of RPC-909 is its spatial displacement of its own arms. When not directly observed, the hands of RPC-909 seem to teleport from containment into an alternate location. Subject has been shown conducting this anomalous behavior from behind solid walls, within crevices, and even behind its own back. Research shows that RPC-909's arm would manifest in a location around the world that contains large gatherings of children at play, most commonly either an outdoor or indoor play area. Recovered CCTV footage has shown children being abducted by RPC-909's arms through slides ball pits, and sand pits, before being violently dragged out of sight. The child would then reappear in RPC-909's containment chamber. During these breaches by RPC-909, the sighted children have been identified, and collating with the aforementioned footage and missing person reports provided substantial evidence that these are indeed the same children that have been abducted. After having abducted a child, RPC-909 will immediately place the child's subject within its open chest cavity. The child, for all intent, no longer exists within the baseline reality. While initially believed that the child was consumed by RPC-909, the incident during August 5th led to a different conclusion for those taken by RPC-909. On August 5th, maintenance worker Grant Ellis assigned to clean RPC-909's containment unit, was assaulted and supposedly consumed by RPC-909 after awaking it from a nap. After a three-day period, Grant Ellis was returned through the chest cavity, fully intact and alive, but suffering moderate psychological damage, comparable to those having been in confined spaces for a prolonged amount of time. This incident led to the conclusion that the children that RPC-909 has abducted are being stored in some form of alternate space or dimension bound within its chest cavity. After this incident, Grant Ellis was debriefed and interviewed after an extensive psychiatric evaluation. The following is a transcript of the interview. Interview Log 909-01 Interviewed Maintenance Worker Grant Ellis Full Name Undisclosed Interviewer Dr. Forward. Grant Ellis had been taken to the infirmary for psychiatric evaluation and treatment for three days prior to the interview. Subject appears to have made a steady recovery. Begin interview log. Hello, Mr. Ellis. How are we feeling? Yeah, a lot better. It's pretty jarring to be back here again, having proper days and times and stuff like that. I wanted to ask you about that, actually. What exactly was it like in there? In that… thing? It was fucking annoying as hell, and scary. Really fucking scary. I don't do well in tight spaces, Doc. Oh. Could you please elaborate? I got taken inside this… tube thing. At first I thought it was that thing's stomach or something, and I was panicking like hell because I thought I was going to get digested or something. But then I noticed this music playing. It was like… how do I describe it? You know those baby toys that play little electronic nursery rhymes? It was something like that coming down from the tubes. I also noticed this tube, which was bright red by the way, connected to a bright yellow tube that bent around a corner, so I followed the tubes. It was a tight squeeze. I practically had to crawl my belly through these brightly colored tubes with this music blaring out from somewhere, and I just kept crawling. For three whole days? 
I couldn't tell what the fucking time was in that place. Everything was so bright. And no, not exactly. I came across a few colorful slides, a couple of ball pits. That's when I realized I was in some fucking Chuck E. Cheese from hell. The whole place just stank of chlorine, especially the ball pits. And the music. Fuck. The music. It was raging. The worst part of it all was I was sure I was being followed. Every so often I kept hearing scuttling behind me, and I swear I hear talking. They sounded like kids, but I never saw any of them. I followed the sounds but couldn't find anyone. I was getting real scared in there. How did you survive? Did you experience any hunger at all? I was starving in there, until I found one ball pit that had a whole bunch of candy bars at the bottom. I wasn't sure what to make of it, but I sure as hell wasn't going to question it. I was hungry as hell, practically stuffed my face with the stuff. Afterwards, I just sat in the ball pit, just thinking, wondering if this was going to be the rest of my life from now on. I started to wonder why the monster kept me alive in this place, or if I was even alive at all, and this was some weird afterlife or something. I wonder if I was the only one in here, and I just started to get really lonely. I just stared at the bright fluorescent yellow light above me, listening to that goddamn music, slowly going batshit. After that, I… I started walking, or crawling again, through the pipes. Then I heard this weird cooing sound, like a baby, somewhere behind me. I heard something tapping or banging on the sides of the tunnel. Then I heard something come running, like scuttling through the tunnels behind me, making this shrill baby noise I can't really describe. I tried to crawl for it, but then I felt this thing come up right behind me, and it grabbed my leg, and the next thing I knew, I ended back out on the outside with that monster blubbering away as you guys rescued me. I'm not too sure what to make of all this, but you came out of all this unharmed, correct? Aside from the emotional damage? Sure, I'm fine. I thought I was going to die on whatever that thing in the tunnels was, but I guess it helped me? Or banished me? I'm really not sure, but hey, I'm glad to be out of there. That's from damn sure. End of log. Expedition Log Expedition Log 909-01 April 15th Forward. After having been briefed on the notes taken from the previous interview with maintenance worker Grant Ellis, CSD-5031 was fitted with audio-visual equipment and ordered to go into the containment chamber and enter the chest cavity while RPC-909 had been incapacitated. Begin audio log. Please proceed towards RPC-909. Remind me again why I have to make this thing angry? We've already tried using manned and robotic drones to survey the chest cavity, with zero results. We've ascertained that living personnel are able to enter the chest cavity. That's a bold claim, Doc. <sighs> well, here goes nothing. CSD-5031 reaches inside RPC-909's chest cavity before slowly climbing inside. This feels so strange. Um, Doc? There's nothing in here. I'm just sitting in this thing's chest. RPC-909 is observed shifting slightly. Oh shit, is this thing waking up? Remain calm. Perhaps it will teleport you once it's conscious. What if the thing killed me instead? Hello? Doc? RPC-909 wakes up and levitates within its containment unit, the upright position tipping CSD-5031 out of the chest cavity. RPC-909 becomes startled and starts crying. Oh shit! Now it's crying! Remain calm. RPC-909 bursts into a fit of loud screeching and crying before snatching up CSD-5031 as CSD-5031 can be heard screaming. Moments later, RPC-909 shoves CSD-5031 to its chest cavity. CSD-5031 vanishes from sight as RPC-909 begins to settle down, babbling incoherently as it stares at Dr. and accompanying research team. CSD-5031, can you hear me? 
CSD-5031, please respond. After a moment of silence, CSD-5031 responds. I'm fine, Doc. I'm fine. I'm in those tunnels like the previous guy said. God, it's cramped in here. Okay, um, I can hear that music. That's gonna get annoying after a while. It's currently playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. There's some more tunnels ahead of me. And what looks like a dip below the corner. A slide, perhaps? Luckily, it seems communication between us is still working. That's something to note down for future reference. Right. All visual and audio content received on our end just fine. How's your end? I hear you loud and clear. Weird, isn't it? Very well. You may proceed. Roger that. Within the initial thirty minutes, CSD-5031 occasionally remarked on the irritating presence of the music and the cramped conditions of the tunnels. After thirty minutes, CSD-5031 comes across a ball pit. Oh, thank God. Open space. Doc, I found a ball pit. Shall I go on ahead? Proceed. And remember to keep this channel clear. We wish to get any audio readings of any possible lurkers, after the reports we've had of the previous entrant being followed. Great. That makes me feel a lot better. CSD-5031 enters the ball pit, at which an audible exclamation of pain is heard. Several children, ranging from ages 4 to 13, begin to appear from the ball pit. Hey, you're an adult. What the heck? The other children chime in with agreement. Several younger children begin to throw plastic balls at CSD-5031, while another child crawls out from behind CSD-5031, crying and holding his arm. Hey, cut it out! I'm sorry, I didn't see you kids here. Several of the children continue to talk amongst themselves, with a few calling out what is assumed to be the word, Tagger, several times. The oldest child of the group proceeds to speak to CSD-5031. Who are you? How did you get in here? We didn't think adults were allowed. Well, first of all, what's your name, kid? I'm… I'm the boss around here, since I'm the oldest. Right. And what is this place? Is there a way out? You ask a lot of questions, but I don't think there's a way out. Why would we want to go out anyway? But… Don't you miss your parents? Don't you want to get out of here and go home? Home? Yes, home. With your parents. I don't know what you're talking about. You sound like a crybaby to me. A few exclamations from the other children, seeming to be in agreement with are heard all around. Okay, this is odd. Don't any of you know what I'm talking about? Your moms and dads? Parents? Crybaby? Yeah, he's a crybaby. Shut up, guys. He's too old to be a crybaby. He probably doesn't even know what that is, do you? I don't know what you're talking about, no. I'm confused. Ha! Told you guys, he's an adult. He doesn't know about how this place works. Okay, so a crybaby is someone who keeps on crying. I figured that much out. They keep crying about things like mommies and daddies and home. Like what you were saying. Whoever says things like that gets sent to the dark tunnels. But I don't know about you. You're too old and we don't get any older people around here. Did you come up with that term for these crying kids? No, the other kids said it before me. I'm just the boss of this ball pit. Are there other ball pits? Yeah, lots. But this one is ours, and we're the Packers. Points to a Packers cap on her head. I named them after my favorite team, and because we pack heat, right guys? Loud cheering is heard from the children. It's great in here. We go and raid other ball pits and steal their candy. It's super fun, and we always win. But don't you get bored? Doesn't this place make you kids go insane? And you can't just live on candy bars. Oh, please shut up. You're so boring. This is why no adults are allowed. It's great here. And you adults always ruin it. Like that ugly guy with the beard that stole our food a while ago. Ugly bearded guy, huh? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Well, tell your friend to stop stealing our food. He's not my friend. We're co-workers. Whatever. He scared us, man. We thought he was… Hey, do you know what a tagger is? You probably don't, being all new here. 
I don't, no. But some of you kids were calling me that. What is it? Oh, you'll love this. A tagger is like an alien with big red eyes, and it crawls through the tunnels to tag you. If you get tagged, you get sent to the dark slides, and have to climb all the way back up again. If he doesn't find you, he leaves you candy, and you win. That's why we got so much candy, because we're the best at hiding. Yeah! That sounds terrifying. Aren't any of you kids scared of this thing? No way, he gives us candy. But what about the monster that brought you into this place? What monster? The tagger? No, the big monster. The one with the long arms. Don't you kids remember? Look, I'll come back. Don't go anywhere. I just gotta talk to someone. Whatever. CSD-5031 proceeds to climb back inside the tunnel and gain a significant distance from the ball pit before speaking again. Doc, did you hear all that? Affirmative. Those children don't seem to recall events prior to the abduction, and this playground dimension appears to have a strong mental influence over them. Doc, would it be possible to rescue these kids? It seems highly unlikely. I want to try. Negative CSD-5031, that is not the goal of this expedition. Your objective is to survey and map out the interior of this dimension, and establish any boundaries or endpoints. But if I run into this tagger creature, follow the directive CSD-5031, do not approach this tagger. We have reason to believe that entity was what sent the maintenance worker back to our reality. If approached by this entity, your orders are to follow the kid's initiative and hide. Understood? Is that understood, CSD-5031? Sure, Doc. I understand. After approximately one hour of further exploration, CSD-5031 comes across a young child, female, aged between three to five years, crying in one of the tunnels. At this point, the audio feed cuts off. CSD-5031 is observed approaching the child, attempting to speak to her. The child appears to acknowledge and speak to CSD-5031. The words, home, are decipherable from the child's lip movements. Moments later, CSD-5031 is seen taking the child's hand and leading her through the tunnels. Approximately 30 minutes, audio communications have been re-established. CSD-5031, come in. Communications are back online. What do you think you're doing? Sorry to go against the directive, sir, but I'm taking this child with me. We're getting out of here together. CSD-5031, you are ordered not to interfere with… With all due respect, Doc, I don't give a shit. I'm not leaving these kids in this place. If there's just one kid we can save, then it's proof we can rescue the rest of them. Now I have an idea. I'm gonna find this tagger, and I'm gonna hold on to this child. I am hoping it will teleport both of us out of here. It's going to be a stretch, but… CSD-5031, this is a ridiculous notion. Drop the child and continue with your objective. No, Doc. I refuse to leave these kids behind. Punish me when I get back. But I'm saving this kid. Over and out. CSD-5031, refuse further communication with Doctor or any of the research team. Monitors continue to show CSD-5031 and the child venturing through the tubes. After another hour goes by, audible banging is heard through the tubes, as well as a cooing sound, as described by maintenance worker Grant Ellis. After several minutes, a small humanoid being, roughly resembling the popularized appearance of a gray alien with large red eyes, appeared around the corner, halting at the presence of CSD-5031 and the child. The child in CSD-5031's custody begins to scream and cry loudly, as the entity responds in a manner similar to the cries of RPC-909. Entity is then seen frantically rushing towards CSD-5031, before visual communications are cut out, but audio briefly picks up the sounds of both the child and CSD-5031 screaming before audio communications also cut out. Moments later. Back in RPC-909's containment unit, RPC-909 ejects a thick red and brown slurry from its mouth onto the floor before crying against its containment walls. End of log.
Expedition Addendum The slurry has been positively identified as the remains of CSD-5031. No additional DNA has been discovered, leading to the conclusion that the child is still trapped within RPC-909's pocket dimension. Additionally, the child identified as within the received audio-visual transcript from CSD-5031's expedition has been identified as who went missing on April 14, 1986, from Heartland's play area, now defunct, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Dr. has hypothesized that the Tagger Entity is a form of avatar for RPC-909 to directly interact with the children it is abducted as a form of playtime with them, and that it had figured out that CSD-5031 was attempting to rescue one of the children, thus terminating him. On record, CSD-5031 is the only known death attributed to RPC-909. Further expeditions to RPC-909's pocket dimension are currently suspended. Discovery RPC-909 was discovered after sightings of a phantom haunting of the now-debunked indoor play areas and restaurants. Following a number of child abduction reports and several surveillance tapes catching a long, pale arm dragging several children to the ball pit, the disused basement of the establishment was raided and RPC-909 was captured with the help of Dr. and Dr. Kessler. Witnesses were given Class G amnestics, and the surveillance footage was apprehended. It was at first theorized there was more than one instance of RPC-909. When on March 17, a child was discovered in RPC-909's containment chamber before being consumed into its chest cavity, matching the appearance of the recently missing from Detroit. It was then that RPC-909's anomalous abduction methods were discovered, and the containment protocol was revised. Addendum After Months of the initial capture and retrieval, Dr. began to have several recurring dreams about obscure, childlike fantasy realms within a confined space, similar to a gigantic indoor play area, featuring appearances by RPC-909 and the Tagger Entity Avatar. Dr. theorized that these dreams were perhaps emitted from RPC-909 itself, projected through a weak form of telepathy as a way to communicate with him. The following is a personal log from Dr. on the dream situation. I'm starting to think that this creature really is just a child. It's hard to explain, but each dream fills me with these overwhelming emotions of loneliness and a longing to have someone. I think that's why it needs the children. As for me, I'm not sure, but I had a thought. I'm essentially the one human adult being this creature has had the most visual contact with. Plus, I did help administer its toy stock, which it seems to enjoy engaging with. Though it hasn't quite figured out what half of them do. If this thing is telepathic to some extent, perhaps it could sense my objective notions towards it. Maybe it could sense I wasn't a threat. Or maybe it just seen me so many times that I'm just the most familiar person to it. Either way, I feel like it's imprinted on me, in some way almost like a young chick would to a perceived mother. It follows me about the containment unit very often, and I've been told by others on the team that it calms down the moment I enter the observation chamber. If that's the case, then perhaps RPC-909 truly is trying to communicate with me. In these dreams I've been having, or if these are mental projections by RPC-909, that what I've been shown is what I think the world inside RPC-909's chest portal is meant to be perceived as. That is, if you were a child, I saw the familiar slides and ball pits, but it was so much bigger, less cramped and claustrophobic. The place was enormous and wondrous, and the plastic balls were floating in the air. There were large, living toys that spoke and played with the kids, and everyone basically lived off of candy bars without any real nutritional need for other food. It was a paradise for kids, but what we as adults perceived was a tiny cramped place 
that almost felt like an intestinal tract rather than a place of genuine fun. The tagger entity was vastly different also. I was shown how it would call out and attempt to tag the children, and everyone would hide. Those that hid well had handed out a surplus of candy. Those that were found disappeared into these long, dark slides that descended into a lower level of sorts. I saw this was the place where the children were forced to play games with the entity, or avatar, whatever it was. But the games were not safe. These were strange and alien, at least for the children they were playing. Things I could only describe as a giant 4D Jenga tower, and ball games where the ball itself was acting on a great central pedal force. Children got hurt, falling and getting smacked about with these almost animate objects. A lot of them were crying, wanting to go home. This felt more like a punishment than a game. I often wonder why this was here. Maybe the child, meaning RPC-909, just doesn't know any better. Maybe this to it was fun. I've been thinking more about this entity, and I don't think it intentionally wants to harm kids. In its own way, this is how it keeps friends and plays with them. Maybe this is all totally normal behavior to wherever this thing comes from. As it would a lot of alien creatures, we even as the Authority have barely any understanding of. Or maybe this creature is one of its kind, whose sole purpose is to play with children, even if it means forcing them to play in many cases. To us adults, it looks like a small, industrial-sized nightmare of pipes. But to a kid, it's an interactive wonderland based around what RPC-909 seems to have in its limited understanding of what kids find fun. Perhaps the ball pit motive is all it knows or what it thinks kids will find comfortable. A place where kids don't get old and can play endlessly, but then it didn't account for those kids who missed their home, or the grown-ups that might end up in that place by accident. After all, this creature is just a child. It doesn't know any better.